You've heard of the silence of the lambs. Silence is golden. And silent, but deadly. But now, I'd like to talk to you about another kind of silence. The silence of history. So far in this series, we've looked at only a tiny fraction of the biblical evidence that doesn't bode well for the historicity of Jesus' resurrection. But let's shift gears a bit and look at the non-biblical evidence for Jesus' resurrection. According to the Gospels, Jesus was known by such people as the Jewish high priest Caiaphas, the Roman prefect Pontius Pilate, King Herod the Great, and his son, Herod Antipas, who, by the way, was Tetrarch of Galilee from 4 BCE to 39 CE, the entire span of Jesus' alleged life, and in the exact same location. With so many miracles ascribed to Jesus in the Gospels, and with so many points of contact between him and famous contemporaries, one would naturally assume there would be at least some historical reference outside of the Bible to Jesus, as well as some of the events described in the Gospels. Well, you know what happens when you assume, don't you? If the claims of Jesus' resurrection were circulating from sometime around 33 CE, and if Christianity was flourishing in the first century, so much that it had already spread all the way across the Mediterranean to Rome by the time of Nero around 60 CE in such numbers that they were known as a sect distinct from the Jews and by the label Christians, then certainly we'd see references to Christianity's founder in the secular writings of the first century. From 33 CE, to the end of the first century gives us almost 70 years, during which we actually find silence. Silence concerning the sect itself. Silence concerning criticisms of the new sect. Silence concerning its founder, much less his resurrection. This causes me to ask questions such as, where are the non-biblical references to saints rising from their tombs and roaming the streets of Jerusalem and appearing to many people? Surely the sight of dead prophets roaming the streets of Jerusalem would be a tale not soon forgotten and therefore merit at least a paragraph in the writings of Philo, who was a Jew living in Alexandria contemporarily with Jesus. Or certainly Josephus, who was born just a few years after Jesus' death and lived half his life in and around Jerusalem. Josephus would have heard that story repeated thousands of times, but he makes no mention of it. Where are the non-biblical references to the two large earthquakes within two days of each other in Palestine around the time of the alleged resurrection? With Jewish priests entering the temple daily, where are the non-biblical references to the temple veil being torn in two mysteriously around the time of Jesus' death? Where are the non-biblical references to a Jesus of Nazareth being crucified? Where are the non-biblical references to Herod the Great killing all babies to and under in and around Bethlehem? Where are the non-biblical references to Pontius Pilate interrogating Jesus? Where are the non-biblical references to the three hours of darkness during Jesus' crucifixion? Certainly, a darkness lasting three hours would have been a highly unusual occurrence that would have been recorded by every astronomer and historian who happened to be outside at the time. You know what? Let's make this even easier. Are there any non-biblical references at all from the first century about a Jesus being the founder of a new sect of belief that would only later come to be known as Christianity? The answer to that question is no. The fact is, apart from the highly disputed passages in Josephus, there is nothing at all in the secular writings about the sect of Christianity for about 80 years after the time Jesus allegedly rose from the dead. And references to Jesus by name can't be found until deep into the second century. By these facts alone, we can dismiss all of those references, no matter what they actually said about Jesus or Christianity, 
because by that time the sect and its beliefs had become widely known to those outside the sect. Any reference to the sect or its founder could just as easily be a mere repeating of what Christians were claiming instead of any independent data about the Jesus in question. Now just hang on a darn minute there, Truth Surge. What about Josephus? He wrote about Jesus in the first century. It was a full 70 years later, but he still wrote about him. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. But if he did, it would be an incredible half-court shot by Christianity at the buzzer to tie the game up. So we'll need to examine the famous Testimonium Flavianum passage, as well as the other brief mention of Jesus in Antiquities of the Jews. More on Josephus in a moment. But if you're satisfied in dismissing these later references as being too late to be counted as real evidence, and if you've seen the Josephus material so many times you're sick of it, you have my permission to skip the rest of this video and just pretend you watched it. But for those of you who are gluttons for punishment, let's do this! Aside from the famous Josephus passages, Christians also roll out a laundry list of later secular references to Jesus and Christianity such as Pliny the Younger, Tacitus, Suetonius, Thallus, Lucian, Celsus, Mara Bar Serapion, and even the Babylonian Talmud. If I had a nickel for every website that listed these as a kind of independent corroboration of Jesus' existence, I'd actually have enough money to buy that new guitar I've been drooling for. Uh, and a new amplifier. One of those pricey boutique amps with the funky names like Cornford. Okay, back to reality. Apart from Josephus, all of these authors, at least the ones we have dates for, are writing much too late to be of any use as corroboration that Jesus actually existed. Not only that, but in these references, Josephus is the only one who mentions Jesus by name. The other references are simply references to either Christianity, Christians, or a founder figure who is not called Jesus by name. No one is disputing that Christianity began sometime in the first century. Well, I'm sure someone does, but we have decent evidence to say that it did begin sometime late in the first century. The claim that it was founded upon the death of a living, breathing human being named Jesus is in dispute, as is the evidence of Christians in Rome by the time of Nero. And so secular references to Christianity alone do not provide any corroboration for the claim that Jesus existed, or in fact that the sect was well known in Rome by the middle of the first century. We need to see some clear and indisputable early references to Jesus the man before a resurrection of such a man could be anything more than fiction built upon fiction. Many of these so-called references to Jesus were written long after the Gospels had been in wide circulation. The Gospel story and what Christians claimed as their doctrine would be known to those writers. And again, the fact that no one thought it important to write about this great wonder worker for almost a hundred years seems suspect to me. In fact, it's almost as if Jesus never existed until the Gospels gained wide enough circulation and the number of Christians grew enough to put them on the radar in the second century. Only then do we start to find secular references to Christianity and still almost none referencing Jesus by name. Without going into too much detail, here's a quick rundown on the alleged secular references to Jesus, starting with Josephus, as I promised earlier. Josephus was a Jew, born in 37 CE, and lived his life in Jerusalem until he was captured by Romans in the Roman-Jewish War that ended roughly in 72 CE. In his work, Antiquities of the Jews, published in 95 CE, he allegedly wrote an amazingly flattering passage about Jesus that goes so far as to not only label him the Messiah, but admit that he was the Messiah. Josephus also calls him a wonder worker and implies that he was not a mere human, but also divine. Now there was about this time Jesus, a wise man, if it be lawful to call him a man. 
for he was a doer of wonderful works, a teacher of such men as received the truth with pleasure. He drew over to him both many of the Jews and many of the Gentiles. He was the Christ. And when Pilate, at the suggestion of the principal men among us, had condemned him to the cross, those that loved him at the first did not forsake him, for he appeared to them alive again the third day. As the divine prophets had foretold these and 10,000 other wonderful things concerning him, and the tribe of Christians so named from him are not extinct at this day. Here are some of the main reasons why this passage was not written by Josephus. 